Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Malden's motto is strong past, proud future. And I believe today's announcement about the long-awaited future of this site will become part of our city's rich history. Before I turn it over to the individual who has helped make this day possible, let me thank our employees for their patience over the years as we work through the many complexities of finding a new home. I also want to thank the community at large for their encouragement to us on fulfilling our long-standing goal of redeveloping the site and revitalizing our downtown. This, without a doubt, has been a long process with many ups and downs. And so it's important to mention that I am certain we would not be gathered here today if not for the hard work and determination of the City Council. Despite the many obstacles, they never gave up, and I would like to introduce to you those members who are present here today. First, the City Council President, Neil Anderson. <laughs> Councilor at large, Craig Spatafora. Councilor at Large, Debbie Di Maria. <laughs> Ward 3 City Councilor, John Matheson. <laughs> Representing the Downtown Ward 4 Councilor, James Nestor. <laughs> Representing Ward 6, Neil Kinnan. And representing Ward 8, Jadine Sika. And representing Ward 5, Barbara Murphy. I would also like to acknowledge our state legislative delegation who have supported our longstanding efforts to revitalize our downtown. State Senator Jason Lewis. State Representative Paul Donato. And representing Congresswoman Catherine Clark's office, Anthony Moreshi. Jefferson Apartment Group, who is the developer for this site, deserves credit as well. Most developers in this fast moving economy might have moved on by now, but they never did. And for that, we are grateful. We are excited and look forward to working with them as I truly believe they want to fulfill our vision of making this area the cornerstone of the downtown. And at this time, I would like to recognize Sandy Silk, Vice President, Development Partner of Jefferson Apartment Group. Thank you, Sandy. And then there is the staff that has worked day and night, including weekends, to make this project happen. And I would like to recognize them as well. Chief of Staff of the Mayor's Office, Maria Luis. <laughs> Our Strategic Planning Analyst, Ron Hogan. <laughs> Executive Director of the Malden Redevelopment Authority, Debbie Burke. and our Assistant City Solicitor, Tom Brennan. <laughs> Finally, as I mentioned, there have been many challenges along the way, and at times we thought we wouldn't move forward. But then Governor Deval Patrick and our state legislative delegation stepped in, not only to provide financial assistance, but to also offer invaluable advice and guidance through their referral of an individual who, to me, will be looked back on as being the difference maker in achieving this once-in-a-lifetime project. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a big welcome to Massachusetts Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, Greg Bialecki. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor.
Good morning, everybody. Uh, Mayor Christensen, City Council President Anderson, members of the City Council, Senator Lewis, Representative Donato. Uh, it's great to see you all here this morning uh, as uh, Governor Patrick's uh, eight years wind down with just about three weeks left. Uh, it's great to be here with you this, this morning uh, to make an announcement that I think reflects uh, a lot of the work that we have been trying to do over the last eight years. Uh, as I hope you all uh, know, one of the very important uh, priorities of Governor Patrick has been to work with our local communities, uh, to invest in them, uh, particularly in their downtowns, whether it's a city or a town, uh, in their downtowns to create the kind of live, work, play neighborhoods where people want to be uh, and are going to drive our economy uh, forward. Uh, we've been particularly focused on doing that in downtowns that are well served by public transit. Uh, as we are here, uh, in particular in our communities that are our gateway cities, uh, as Malden is. So uh, about a year ago, a little more than, just a little more than a year ago, actually we're all here together, right here, uh, and Governor Patrick and I announced a grant in the amount of $3 million in support of uh, this project uh, to relocate City Hall and the police station uh, and to bring uh, apartments and mixed use uh, here to Malden Center right across from the T station. Uh, we knew at the time uh, that that was probably, that the money that we were investing uh, was going to be alongside a significant financial commitment from the city as well. Uh, we knew at the time it probably was not, was so almost certainly uh, not the number that was going to be sufficient state support to make the project happen, uh, but there were an awful lot of details of the project uh, that had not yet been resolved. And so we offered, and we made that announcement last year really for two reasons. One was to reflect the commitment of the state, that we were prepared to be financial partners uh, in this exciting project. And the second was as a side of encouragement, that we believed uh, that what the city was doing was the right thing. Uh, this is the kind of, it's a bold move. It's going to be um, you know, you know, relocating City Hall and the police station. It's going to be some dislocation while it happens. Uh, but it's the kind of thing that is going to reshape uh, this block, these blocks and this downtown really for the next 50 years. Uh, so, and it's that kind of bold long-term thinking that the governor and I are very supportive of. So we wanted to put down a marker that we were prepared to participate and that we did believe the city uh, was headed on the right track. Uh, and I think uh, that encouragement uh, has worked and I know, as, as the mayor just said, uh, the city has really done an enormous amount of work working with Jefferson and Sandy. We thank you as well for being such a great partner. Uh, but an enormous amount of work uh, over the last uh, 13 or 14 months to the point now uh, that uh, we don't just have an idea for a great project anymore. We actually have uh, a great project and the pieces are in place and the budgets have been developed uh, and we have a better understanding of what the, uh, uh, the cost will be for the city and what the state share should be. Uh, so in uh, recognition of all that great work and our continued enthusiasm for this, I'm pleased uh, to announce on behalf of Governor Patrick today an additional state MassWorks grant in the amount of $6 million, which will bring the total investment in this great project to $9 million. Ooh. My, my, <laughs> my sincere congratulations to everyone uh, who's been involved, and I know, uh, Mayor, and uh, you've described all along as Billy, been a team effort with you and the City Council, and uh, that's important to us as well. I think that we have found uh, that we are able to be uh, helpful uh, financially uh, to great projects like this uh, at the state level, but it really, the idea and the inspiration and the commitment has to come from the local level. If it's not a project that the community embraces, uh, then despite whatever assistance we might provide, it's not gonna happen. So we're, we're very grateful to that. I would like to acknowledge Larry Field, our state permitting ombudsman, who's been our great uh, friend and partner to me in this and many other important uh, development projects all around the state. Thank you, Larry. <laughs> Uh, and as always, uh, the governor and I are extremely grateful to our state legislative delegation. These grants are only possible because of the uh, spending authorizations that they provide. Uh, this has been, as all of you know, over the last five years, a very difficult time economically, thanks to the Great Recession. It's been difficult for individuals and families and businesses, and it's also made state budgets very tight. 
Uh, Governor Patrick has asked the legislature, uh, even in those tight budgets, to continue uh, to make those investments that benefit our state for the long term, particularly in education and in infrastructure and community revitalization. As I said, the work that we're going to do here uh, will change the face of Malden for literally generations. And so we're delighted that uh, uh, the, the legislature in particular, Senator Lewis and Representative Donato, have been supportive of that, making the money available so that we can continue to think about what will make Massachusetts successful and prosperous uh, in the long term. So congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Secretary, and to Governor Deval Patrick. Again, it was the willingness of the governor and yourself to stay with us that helped make this day a reality. You have helped Malden take a major step forward in its long and celebrated history. And again, we all want to say thank you. That's now we would like to talk about the project and what it could look like. Where we currently stand will be a mixed use development. City Hall and the police station will be demolished and the plan is to reconnect Pleasant Street with buildings on both sides. Jefferson Apartment Group will build 234 market rate rental units with 25,000 square feet of street level retail space, 42,000 square feet of office space, which will be the site of the new city hall, and 276 parking spaces. The city will purchase a condominium shell from Jefferson Apartment Group for $4 million and use public bidding to fit out the interior. It is believed that this is the first time in the state's history that a municipality has housed its offices in a mixed-use development. Now, a letter of intent was signed on December 11th, which contemplates Jefferson Apartment Group obtaining approvals and purchasing the buildings in 2016. The development is expected to open in 2017. And again, at this time, I would like to introduce Sandy Silk from Jefferson Apartment Group to tell you a little bit about the project. Thank you, it's a great day to be here in Malden. On behalf of Jefferson Apartment Group, I wanna particularly thank Governor Patrick, Secretary Bialecki, um, Representative DiNardo and Senator Lewis, as well as Mayor Christensen and the City Council for their respective commitments to this project. We are here today because all of these people were willing to think outside the box and work um, collaboratively in order to transform Malden Center, and they all had collectively had a vision for what that could be. Working particularly in collaboration with the MRA and the Mayor staff, we have taken our initial concept, which was a mixed use program that included residential and ground floor retail, and transformed that to include an office component. Um, that office component, as the mayor explained, will be sold to the city as an office shell, which will then be constructed by the city and transformed into Malden's new city hall. If I can ask Senator Lewis to scoot out of the way just a little bit. You can see the rendering on the right shows the, the view from Commercial and Florence Street looking down a newly created Pleasant Street. The building on the right is what we refer to as, at the moment as the South Building, which has the majority of the residential units in it. It has ground floor retail that wraps around from Commercial Street up to Pleasant Street to really activate the entrance to Malden Center. And it has approximately 180 units above above that retail. There is a parking garage, as the mayor mentioned, that has 276 parking spaces tucked behind that building, which takes advantage of the change in grade between Exchange Street and Pleasant Street. The building on the left, which we refer to as the North Building, is the building where the City Hall office space will be um, incorporated. 
the um, there are 54 units of residential housing in that building that are all above above the ground floor retail and again the retail the 25,000 ish square feet of retail will be split roughly equally between those two two buildings with the true idea of creating a gateway into Malden Center and really connecting the dots between the the train station um, that's right here that serves both commuter and um, subway traffic as well and connecting that into the commercial core we really see this project and this um, innovative approach to incorporate the city hall space within the shell of our building as a, as a really innovative approach, which also speaks to Malden's history and Malden Center's history as the center of the, the city's political and civic, um, civic heart, if you will. And so maintaining that here and being able to keep city hall um, within these, this footprint, we felt was a really great thing to be able to achieve. And we couldn't have achieved it without all of the people in this room. We believe also that this mix of uses also will serve to enhance the vibrancy of Malden Center because now there are kind of 24 seven uses with the office space remaining here as well as the retail and the residential. And it will further reestablish the commercial center. We look forward to continuing to work in partnership with the city of Malden and with the Commonwealth to build upon the work that's already done and to realize the true potential of this project and the transformation of Malden Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sandy, again. Um, as you know, the project also involves the relocation of the police station. The plan is to build a new state-of-the-art police station at 794 838 Easton Ave. And to give you some uh, scale, this is the site of the existing uh, location on Easton Avenue now. So up above is where we are, and then down below is the site we're purchasing to relocate the police department. And this site here was considered for uh, several reasons. It consists of 1.4 acres, and it is situated in a corridor that has seen some nice improvements in recent years, such as with the uh, bike path, uh, Yankee Pest Control's uh, mural that was just unveiled, and we have some new businesses along Easton Ave. It's also uh, centrally located for easy access to and from all parts of the city. And we believe it is a location well suited for a police station with excellent street frontage and adequate surface parking. Now there have been no definite designs, but we do have a conceptual drawing of what the police station could look like and we wanna show that to you now. So we are um, moving forward with the purchase and are currently in the process of conducting uh, due diligence including environmental testing uh, on the site. Uh, the city and the current property owner have signed a preliminary agreement with the expectation that the closing will occur in the spring of 2015. The total cost of the new municipal buildings and public infrastructure is projected to be approximately 31 to $32 million. The city has agreed to a real estate tax abatement with the developer for the value of the residential units. And in addition to the mass works grants that were announced by Secretary Bialecki, the city will issue a bond for $12.5 million and use the $10.26 million in sale proceeds from the buildings. As I've said, all this has been a joint effort by many, and in particular, the City Council. So at this time, I would like to introduce City Council President Neil Anderson to speak on behalf of the body. Oh, good morning, everyone. What a great day this is, huh? Christmas is just a few days away, but it looks like Santa Claus has already been here with, uh, in his bag was a check for $9 million and, and a great collaborative effort taking place uh, by all of, the, all of the key players here. And certainly uh, on behalf of the City Council and many of my colleagues are here to celebrate this day with me and with us all, uh, this couldn't have happened and it wouldn't have happened had the City Council not been able to, to work along in this collaborative effort with all the key parties. And 
without uh, really any further ado, I just want to say how pleased we all are with what we have arrived at. Um, it would be, you'd be surprised if you knew all of the twists and turns that we have been through in thinking about uh, the different uh, models that we, were, that we were earlier thinking about, whether it was going to be over on Dartmouth Street or Florence Avenue or, or in this building, and what we've seemed to have come to, and I believe is something that, that we all feel so very, very strongly about, is a project that makes sense for us here, and it just couldn't have happened without all of the parties being involved and collectively coming to this, to this point in time. So I couldn't be more pleased, and on behalf of all of my colleagues in the City Council, so happy to be here today to do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think it's appropriate to end this event with a quote by a prominent businessman, Howard Schultz, who I believe was referring to what has been accomplished here in Malden today. He said, when you're surrounded by people who share a passionate commitment around a common purpose, anything is possible. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. Onward and upward. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.